1.4, polynomials. For our definition of a polynomial, we have an expression that can be written in the form a n times x to the n plus a n minus 1 to the x n minus 1 all the way down to a 2 x squared plus a 1 x plus a naught. Now each of these a i's, okay, each of these parts are called coefficients. Now this one with no variable, this term with no variable, is called a constant because it doesn't vary. Now each of these products, each of these components that are added or in some cases subtracted is called the term. Now the highest power of a variable that occurs in the polynomial is the degree of the polynomial. So in this case this is an nth degree polynomial. The highest exponent is n, whatever n is. Now the leading term is that term that has the highest, highest exponent and its coefficient is called the leading coefficient. So let's go ahead and work with some polynomials. So identify the degree, the leading term, and the leading coefficient for each of these. So we're going to begin by looking at finding the highest exponent. In this case, that is 3. So the degree of this one is 3. That term that has that highest exponent, that is our leading term. So negative 4x cubed. And then the leading coefficient is the coefficient on that. So we start by finding the the highest exponent and that tells us everything else. Now one thing that's important is that all of these things, the degree, the leading term, and the leading coefficient, in fact really just the leading term tells you just about everything you need to know about the behavior of a polynomial. When we get to graphs in chapter 5, that leading term is going to tell you everything you need to know except for the solutions and we'll have to figure those out a different way. All right, Part B, our degree is 5 because that is the highest power. So that term 5t to the fifth that is our leading term and then the leading coefficient is the constant attached to that. The constant multiplied by that variable. All right, part C the degree is 3 p cubed so minus p cubed, negative p cubed is our leading term and then the leading coefficient is negative 1 there. All right, next we want to find the sum then we'll find the difference with some other polynomials. To find the sum this comes down to what we call combining like terms. We want to combine the terms of these polynomials that have the same exponent. So the way I'm going to write this is 4x cubed because that's the only x cubed term plus okay now for my x squareds I'm going to say 12 plus 8 plus is, is because we have a sum x squared that's how many x squared terms we have that would take care of these two plus 9 plus negative 5 okay that is these two terms right here 9 plus negative 5 x and then we have plus negative minus 21 plus 20. So 4x cubed plus 20x squared plus 4x minus 1. And there we have it. Everything has a different exponent here. We have different power for each of those, so that is as complete as we're going to get. Part 3, the only thing that's going to be different is we are subtracting. So beginning with the fourth powers, we'd have one of those. So we'll have 7x to the fourth. Next we'll deal with our x cubed. We only have one of those, and it's in the second one. So how I'm going to write this is 0 minus 5 x cubed. Next we'll deal with x squared. So this will be plus negative 1 minus negative 2 x squared. Next we'll have plus 6 minus 3 x. And then we have plus 1 and plus 2. So plus 1 minus 2. So 7x to the fourth minus 5x cubed 
That'll be positive 1, so plus 1x squared plus 3x minus 1. And that's our difference. We have different exponents in all of them. We cannot combine any of those, so that's what we get. Example 4, find this product. Okay, so rather than add or subtract, we're going to multiply, and division comes much later. Right, so this will be the last thing we do with this. To find the product, what we do is we take each of these terms and we multiply them by each term in the second polynomial that we're multiplying. So one way to write this out is I'm going to take 2x and I'm going to multiply it by 3x squared minus x plus 4 so that I can use my distributive property plus 1 times 3x squared minus x plus 4. I'm going to multiply 2x times all of this and I'm going to multiply 1 times all of this. Now distributing I will get 6x cubed minus 2x squared plus 8x, and distributing 1 here, 3x squared minus x plus 4. Now combining our like terms, like we did in the last couple of problems, 6x to the third, now we'll take these two, adding those two we get plus 1x squared, That'll be a plus 7x plus 4. All right, number 5, find this product. I'm going to write this out the same way that I did the last one. 2x times 3x plus 3 minus 18 times 3x plus 3. Distributing 6x squared plus 6x minus 54x minus 54. Combining like terms, 6x squared, and that will be negative 45, oh, that's not right, 48 minus 48x minus 54. Okay, there we are. Now, a common technique here is to double distribute, which is in a sense what we're doing. But that is to take, what I often do, is 2x times 3x, which gives the 6x squared. 2x times 3, which gives us the 6x we have here negative 18 times 3x, which gives you the negative 54x, negative 18 times 3, which is the negative 54, and then combine. It's the same process, it's a different way to organize it. So you've probably seen these written a little differently. So let me see if I can, I'll do number 7 in the way that you've probably seen. So we're going to expand 3x minus 8 quantity squared. So I'm going to first write this as 3x minus 8 times 3x minus 8. Saying something, to the, raising it to the second power is the same as multiplying by itself twice. So 3x times 3x minus 8 minus 8 times 3x minus 8. So this will be 9x squared minus 24x minus 24x plus 64 so that we have 9x squared minus 48x plus 64. And there we have it. Okay. With number 7, I said I'll work this out a little differently. I'm going to just draw arrows here. 9x times 9x, which is 81x squared. 9x times negative 4, negative 36x. 4 times 9x plus 36x. And 4 times negative 4 minus 16. Now this one's special in that these two terms reduce to 0. So this is, we'll just leave that out. 
minus 16. Again, the same process of what, as what I was doing previously, just a little different way to organize it. it takes more thinking than it does writing. All right, now number eight, we'll have to do this one like number four. I'll write this as x times 3x minus 2y plus 5 plus 4 times 3x minus 2y plus 5. Distributing on the first, we get 3x squared minus 2xy plus 5x. And on the second, plus 12x minus 8xy plus 20. I'm going to put the x squared term first, so 3x squared. I'll go with my xy next. Negative 2xy minus 8xy is minus 10xy. Now I'll go with the x terms. That would be plus 17x plus 20. We have one constant term. All right, and that brings us to the end of this section on polynomials. Remember, the leading term tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Um, that and keep up with this double distributing that we're doing when we multiply. Those are kind of our big takeaways.